Why don't we pray and then we'll get started, right? Okay. Father, we, we come before you this morning, Lord. We draw near to you, Father God, because you have invited us to come to your very throne room, Father God. We thank you for this awesome privilege, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to look into your word. Master, we thank you for this uh, season of uh, equipping, Lord. We thank you for this season of, uh, Lord, empowering by your spirit. And uh, we thank you. We just want to make all of ourselves, Lord, available, Lord, for every, Lord, every prompting, every leading, every guiding, everything that you have in store, Master. We just want to, Lord, come and uh, make ourselves available, Father God. Yes, Lord, spirit, soul, and body, we are yours. And we thank you, Lord. Uh, even as you take us to this season of equipping, I pray that it will be something glorious coming out of it. And I pray, God, that, um, Lord, that there will be an overflow of your principles and presence, Lord, from out of our lives, Lord, touching and blessing others, Master. Yes, God, we thank you. We pray that each one of us, Lord, will be used by you, Lord, in your kingdom, for your glory, Lord, in various ways, God, that we have not even imagined, Father God. And I just pray that... Um, Lord, that we will be found faithful and that we will run the race with endurance. We thank you. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. So, um, last class, we just had one session, right? So, um, so we've been looking at, uh, let me just share the notes. Okay, so I think we we were looking at some of the the um, skill of the band, right? And also we were looking at um, uh, the role of the band, and also uh, as in, in terms of musicians, and also we were looking at uh, some of the practical aspects of the worship team itself, right? When it comes to preparation, uh, we were looking at how one needs to uh, practice, which is personal. And also uh, the the difference between practice and rehearsal, right? Well, it's it's basically one and the same thing because you are actually, you know, you are getting prepared for for something, right? You're practicing for something. You're preparing for something. You're rehearsing for something. But um, just make that distinction of practice and rehearsal uh, to mean that practice is personal. There is there is you know a part of preparation which is not in the group, right? Which is something individual, so which you do on your own. Now that preparation is what like we are calling as practice, like personal, maybe we can call it pr personal practice. We're just calling it as practice, right? So, so that part is important, very important. And uh, that will contribute to what we would call um, that would that would contribute to when the group gathers together and does a rehearsal. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong in calling that also practice, but just to make the distinction that the team is rehearsing and it's everybody coming together to again collectively prepare, right? But when we when the team comes together to to do a rehearsal, then we we it is after people have personally prepared. Okay, so that's one thing that we need to understand that will really help the worship ministry. After people have personally learned, prepared, and then you come together as a team to further put together our preparation or learning together. Because anyway, you are going to be ministering as a team, functioning as a team. So when that personal preparation happens and then the group preparation happens then there is a lot of value like the the team is even more effective in terms of skill in terms of understanding one another and what we are going to play etc um, you know so um so that's something that we need to um we need to put in place so it's it's good if every worship team uh, every, every worship ministry does this right um then we can look at um, what really happens in the personal preparation and what really happens in the group preparation, right? 
um so if you are a worship leader worship uh, you know minister if you are a singer if you are a musician so what happens in the personal preparation now, personal preparation you you know if it's going to be a song if it's going to be a piece of music that you're playing um so there is personal learning right you're learning how it is how it is sung how it is done what are the words right and also even as we do that you know not just the skill part but the the words the meaning of the words um the revelation of the truth that that particular song is bringing about everything means something to you personally to you right even as you read even as you you know sing and uh, and that is something that is also required right not just the ability part of it right your understanding of of that particular song the 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 revelation that it's pointing to the truth that it's declaring proclaiming because you're going to be using that as an opportunity to facilitate people to encounter that truth about god or encounter god himself right so in my time of personal preparation i'd like to understand i'd like to allow that truth to go through me you know i'd like to process that truth receive that truth in my heart in my spirit and make it part of mine even before i use it to invite others or to point others to god right so so this is a very important part of it so we we should not miss out on that so that's that's why personal practice is very important right the second part of it is of course learning to you know the 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 aspect that minute details of the song itself like what chords do you play if you're a musician if you're you know if you're a you know the instrumentalist like if you play the drums if you play the uh, you know any other instrument you know how it, how is it played right uh, because the bible is not against skill you know when you play with skill or you know when you play well it is not something that the bible considers as unspiritual right there are enough and more references in the bible which which actually talks high which which speaks highly or esteems the the skill of a person uh very highly you know general skill itself you know we we looked at proverbs um 22 29 or you know 22 29 so we see that okay he who is skillful will stand before kings and not before ordinary people the same when it comes to musical skill and ability you know the the psalm that we can go through is psalm 33 right where it talks about how one needs to play skillfully um and it exhorts the person to play skillfully because you are doing it for god and of course you know generally speaking the bible the word of god talks about whatever we do right eating drinking even mundane things like like that whatever you do do it for the glory of god so obviously it means that you do you know uh, when we th- consider skill when we consider you know ability talent you know you hone it you train yourself in it and so you you know you do that well so therefore personal preparation is very very important right very important um well when we say personal preparation we 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 consider okay mainly the spiritual part uh, one, one would consider the spiritual part of praying and waiting on the lord and so on that is that is one part of it a main part of it and the skill part of it is also equally important right because what would happen if you are not prepared in the area of skill for example what could happen i think any thoughts if you're not prepared in the area of if you're not prepared in the area of skill you know you've not practiced your part or you know what could happen sorry sometime like when there is no practice so we can see the uh you know messy things mm. maybe some people play different chord and uh, because of that maybe that the environment the mm. the pre- presence will be there but the yeah. environment will be there it will be something like people can like this can open this they will right. see and mm. they will 
like you know the flow will be there no mm. it will be changed suddenly correct correct so we, we we need to understand that music also has a very important part in worship okay it's not the main thing but it's you can't do without it because the whole you know the whole bible talks about it so therefore it can either draw people to god or it can distract and be a stumbling block it can do either of those things right it can draw people to god uh, you know we we looked at the anointing the prophetic anointing being released when the musician played right the prophet calls elisha calls for for a musician the musician plays it says the hand of the lord came upon elisha and elisha prophesies right we see that right uh, and we can look at that uh, uh, sequence um um uh, is it in second kings or? um okay which uh, reference is that okay so it's second kings chapter 3 right elisha then it involves all the kings jeho um, they they go because jeho shafat is there and and uh, so they go to elisha for the word of the lord they want to know you know all these people are coming against three kings are there and uh, they're coming against uh, moabites are coming against them so what did, what does elisha say elisha says um, now verse 15 now bring me a musician then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the lord came upon him okay so the so the prophet knew the connection elisha knew the connection between uh, music and the release of prophecy right so he knew the connection between he, he knew that music or anointed music if we can call it that stirs up and releases the prophetic anointing anointing right so that's that's something that we can conclude right so he says or it is making him more and more aware or sharper uh, when it comes to hearing god now we can say that and then he says you know verse 16 and and he said thus says the lord right so something happened to elisha when the musician played played same when david played the harp something happened in the very atmosphere something happened to saul right something happened in the spiritual realm that cause that spirit to leave right so music has that ability has that potential therefore one needs to give all the more attention to you know to to it to the skill aspect of it and like like shira was saying you know it can either it can bring a distraction right it can it can be a stumbling block if it is not done well so so that is why we need to you know increase the skill it is not to say that you know i am a great musician it is not to say that you know look how well i am playing not to draw attention to yourself and and all that but it's a fine line you know you need to be good at your 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 instrument your craft you need to be skilled skilled in that uh, so that you know it can you can give offer the best at the same time it can facilitate it can draw people um, to worship god right so that's the thing i remember being in a service when uh, i mean i heard about uh, this person complaining they said that uh, the instrument was not tuned okay so that was the basic thing that you would do you know whether it's a guitar or whatever you tune the instrument but this person said you know the instrument was not tuned so therefore the whole thing him he himself being a musician uh, you know he was for him it was a distraction every time it was played he said hey something is not right um yes we can overcome you know if it's a one off thing we can always you know put it aside and worship god worship the lord and not let these things bother us but if it becomes 
a pattern right if it becomes something where a person is not paying attention to the craft and you know over a period of time over and over again if the same thing is repeated then we know that he this person is not actually esteeming the lord with his or her skill right so so that's the that's the thing right so um one needs to put in personal practice then the whole dynamic of having people who have put in their time for personal preparation coming together and rehearsing as a band right so now rehearsing as a band you see that it is a complex thing right if you even if you add one more person to yourself and you're playing something then it, there needs to be understanding right you need to say okay this is how we are going to do if you add you know if you had two more people or if you had three four people five people and more then there is a need to plan things out right you cannot just just do it you know even when we play spontaneously there is an understanding a certain level of skill a certain level of understanding that is there so that comes only when the team practices so therefore um you know you you practice like if you are for example if you want to get into the details of it it is like okay how are we starting this song right and how are the certain sections of this song played right because maybe it's a you know you might think okay i want to play it like this the other person might think i want to play it like this the uh, you know third person might think maybe we should you know stop or play music you know not play music at all so whatever it is you know we need to have clarity and oneness in what we are going to do right and uh, and how we are going to do it so that happens when the team rehearses right so how are we start you know simple things to keep in mind is how are we starting the song how are we finishing the song right and you know if i don't want to finish the song in this manner how am i going to Now tell you how am I going to signal to you? You know these what we call as worship cues, right? Uh, how am I going to, you know, tell you this because we are in the middle of something? And then how can I direct you? So all along, all this, you know, we we kind of talk about it, we plan it, and then uh, you know that's that's how it helps. Right? And some some things like uh, even the dynamics of the song, you know, where do we play loud? Where do we play soft? Etc. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Questions. So, regarding the symbols, boss. Uh, regarding the symbols of like to give to team. Ah, uh, uh, signals. Uh, signals. Yeah. Like, uh, cues. Yeah, yeah, cues. It can be the distraction to the worship. Yeah, uh, to the worship itself. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, you can either do it in a very distracting manner, or you can do it in a very, uh, in a non-distracting manner. So. you can do that <coughs> like for me personally see i i play the guitar and i sing right so i i cannot signal with my hands or you know because my hand you know, it's, it's occupied all the time so i rely on verbal cues you know i i tell them if i want the team to go in a certain direction repeat a certain part of it i i speak it out loud you know i just call out that line Uh, you know maybe it's a song like uh, blessing and honor and then you're singing that bridge um uh, your kingdom shall reign over all the earth uh, sing into the ancient of days so maybe we sung it twice but i want them to sing again so i will say that again you know uh, so so i normally use verbal cues and maybe for the you know maybe for the finish of that particular song i might just lift the guitar or you know signal to um yeah maybe the md or the drummer and so you know so these these are things that we can do or maybe when we want to build up something like play louder play strong you know some section i might like stamp my feet or something like something that goes with the song and something that is not distracting either for the congregation or for the team so so that comes you know when we kind of practice together and yeah so intentionally we should you know am i distracting am i kind of uh, because if i'm you know if i'm waving my hands and do this and all that then it becomes a distraction but we can we can do it without distracting yeah yeah you have a question there was about the skill like skill level yeah skill like what we can see in many churches pastor 
Uh, some people that are very skillful. Very skillful. Very skillful, but like they are not aligned with the word of God. Mm. But if we see like some in villages or like uh, not cities, some areas, mm. there's only certain people are talented, okay. skillful, not talented, skillful on certain things. Like uh, the tax is, uh, point is what, Pastor? They are skillful. They are not aligned mm. in the word of God. And we need them also. Yeah. And we maybe talked with them so many times because there is no one else, for example. And some people are good. They are aligned. They are coming to church. They are mm. aligned with God, but they are not skillful. skillful. They don't want to learn. Sorry, they don't? They don't want to learn. They don't want to. Like they don't have interest in music and uh. like this. Thing. So how to manage this thing when it's come like this? Yeah. Yeah. So some people have a heart for God, but really not interested in the music part of it, skill part of it. Some people are highly skillful. But when it comes to uh, like the things of the Lord, they're not maybe, maybe they're good people, believers, but then they're not as intense about worship, uh, you know. So, yeah, so that is always, uh, uh, that's always a challenge. So the thing is to, um, uh, you know, uh, if there is a worship team, right, the main imp important thing is to have that vision like for the team. Like you have people playing together uh, to talk to them and say, okay, this is, why we are doing this this is why we are here as a team you know and talk to them about the fundamentals of worship because people many people you know especially if there's a skilled person but he's not really and you're saying he's not aligned maybe he's not you know he doesn't understand the worship part of it he's, he's good at playing but uh, his heart is really not in playing it unto the lord right he wants to play it well play it good without any mistakes in that sense he's correct but it is not offered as a, you know, as a as a offering to God. So, yeah. So so with teaching, when we you know we teach them from the Word of God, we uh, give them the vision of why we are doing what we are doing, and uh, you know what it can. What is the objective of doing it? Because many people don't realize that worship is powerful, that worship is uh, encountering God, worship is experiencing the presence of God. Um, even people in the worship team think that, okay, maybe, you know, we're just singing some nice songs, you know, some happy songs, some, some you know, very meaningful songs, and about God, to God, and that's it, right? So when we, when we kind of give them the understanding of, hey, this is what worship is, and these are all the different aspects of worship, you know, personal worship, corporate worship. And when they are personally worshippers, right, in their personal time, then when they come together as a team, it becomes even more powerful because it's out of the overflow of their personal times of worship that they are ministering together as a team. So it's a journey that a person can make. It's a journey that the team can make from having a little understanding to you know uh, maturing in in this particular thing so there's always we're always growing and so that's the thing so intentionally uh, like you know at regular intervals if there is teaching you know if there is uh, pointing to the word of god and, and a greater understanding of it then obviously the person will you know and also you can look to grow the team Right. That is the next thing what we are going to look at, where we have people, you know, when we have this vision in place, when we have the teaching in place, and we'd be intentionally looking for people who can come and join, right? So when these first two things are in place, then you can actually have more people, right? Uh, so you can uh, have auditions, you can have people, and take them through that. Path. So then you have, you know, more options, right, for people more skilled, uh, and people who have the heart being part of the worship uh, team and the ministry. So, but that's the way. It's not an easy thing, but it's uh, and it's not a instant thing. That's the thing. It will it will take time, right? So yeah. Okay. Right. Um, any any other questions? Any other thoughts? Let me check the folks. Any questions here? No. Okay. So some some things to you know uh, some more thoughts on skill. Um, 
we see generally like even moses and david and everyone we we see that um, i'm sorry there's a typo there about kenaniah right um so these people were skilled at it you know they were skilled they were also trained so we see that in scripture you know uh, psalm 33 again play skillfully so skill is something the ability to do something good something well right it's a gift from god must be developed skill that that cannot be developed i mean uh, that is ignored neglected you know it's uh, it becomes a waste right um so we need to understand that it actually facilitated helps it, it has a spiritual connotation but what is acceptable to god is spirit and truth worship right so your your music when you offer it it is it has to be spirit and truth right so how can a natural thing be spirit and truth when it's offered when the musicians play when the band plays when it's offered to god from your innermost being you know there's a difference when people play something technically and when you know some pe- it may not be a great musician but they you know they play well but they play as something from their heart as unto god you know it makes a big it's huge difference right um so uh, and and then we the, it's it makes a difference in the even in the you know awareness of the presence of god uh, in that particular service or in that particular time right okay um so okay, let's look at the skills you know uh, of the person who's leading worship okay so one who's a you know people have um, used the term you know there's no one leading worship there there are only lead worshipers okay so whichever way you see it you know we might we need to have someone now first of all you know why should we have someone leading worship you know, have you thought of that all of us are called to worship god why can't we just gather together and you know just open up and this you know, we just worship together why should we have someone to bring in order to bring in uh, to lead I mean, uh, so that it is very helpful for the people to get mm, to bring in focus to bring in order right um it's it's we just need someone to facilitate right someone to a team to facilitate or person to facilitate that will always you know bring in that otherwise it can actually pull in different directions right um like for example you know it can start with uh, it, it when and i say it can pull in different directions it, i'm talking about uh, in terms of theme theme also you know what we are actually focusing on it can go from you know you can go from forgiveness to praise to uh, repentance to so many things right it can actually pull in different directions thematically and it need not be necessarily what god wants for that particular time right so so it can so for, for that we just need to have someone facilitate that so so we're looking at you know when it comes to someone who's leading worship right um so what are some qualifications what are some skills that are required right so um if you're looking at wor- worship leading right we see that it's both something to do with um our heart it is uh something to do also something to do with the skill right so we can say it's an art we can say it's a science as well there are some practical um logical steps that we need to take as well right um so there are there's a skill that is required musical skill or at least understanding of the music part you know so i can lead worship and maybe you know as i start to lead worship maybe i didn't have any understanding i didn't have a proper understanding of music and timing and so on now that lack of understanding can bring in some kind of confusion some kind of distraction but i can learn and grow and i i can go beyond that i can learn and set those limitations aside you know? so this is something that can be learned okay um the, there are some abilities that we have naturally you know a natural sense of timing a natural sense of uh, you know uh 
maybe even singing a natural sense of tone etc um yeah so those are some things that some people are born with you know you you have it and some people are born with very high skills of music and so on right like for example um there's something called perfect pitch in the sense they will sing suppose you sing some a note or they hear a note musical note they will know what note it is just by listening to it right so you just play any random note or you sing any song they'll know tell you okay it is in this key okay so it's something called a perfect pitch like not not everybody has it some people are born with it so so normally we find out in relation to other notes right suppose you hear a note then you you know you maybe play it on an instrument and see okay it's close to this or this is exactly sounding like this note and then you find out but without anything without any instrument they just hear it and they're able to say okay this is what it is so we have you know people on that you know, so highly skilled or you know it's a natural innate ability but when it comes to worship leading if that ability is not there you know if that kind of ability is not there but one should have a basic understanding of rhythm timing music tone etc right if it is not there it can be developed it has to be developed otherwise it can become a distraction right so so that's the thing um so what are some things that are required right musical skill effective musical skill when we say effective we're saying okay it's need to be workable applicable uh, practical so it doesn't become a it's not a uh, it's not something which is deficient enough to become a distraction right it's not less that level skill level is not less so that it becomes a um, you know distraction second thing is more of an administrative side right so where organization skill is also required some kind of administrative side. why because you know you are leading a team you know not just leading um you know that song but you're leading a team you know even before we are ministering you know in that service or a time when we're talking about corporate service again before we even come to that point you are already you know doing certain things like selecting the song directing the team right saying okay this is how i would like the song to be etc so uh, there needs to be some kind of a you know skill with regard to organize organization and preparation and so on right um oops then um just one second sorry um then we also need to look at uh, in terms of experience you know experience is a great teacher and uh, even as we do more of it and right, we learn right and um, so it's there's nothing that can replace uh, experience that right? we learn from experience we learn what to do we learn not to do right not to do not to repeat certain things when we repeatedly you know uh, have opportunities and we have um uh, we have experience right then practice leadership ability relational ability you know leadership ability to lead the team to give the vision to the team etc but also relational ability the ability to relate to uh people around right when you say relational ability we are saying not only to the team that you are leading but also to relate to the audience to relate to the congregation right uh to be able to relate to them to be able to you know we cannot we are not like performers who just perform irrespective of who the audience is and then you know we just switch off after after we perform no we need to be able to relate to them right you are actually doing the role of a pastoring you know facilitating uh, drawing people inviting people to encounter the lord to worship the lord to give of themselves to the lord right so we need to have that relational ability uh, to connect with people you know both on stage and off stage right? we need to understand that because we are worshipers all the time you no know, not just when we are on stage we are called to be worshipers in spirit and truth when we are off stage right when we are when we are not actually actively leading 
So we need to understand that. So this relational ability is for both times when we are, you know, when we are on stage or off stage, right? Again, uh, a very important aspect is that of character, uh, calling and uh, character. Okay, has God called you for a particular kind of ministry? Because if He has called you, then He has also graced you for it. You know, when God calls us to do some things, He also gives us the grace for that particular area of ministry. Okay, uh, grace. When we say grace, it talks about the favor of God, right? When we say grace, we are also talking about the empowering of God, empowering ability of God, right? So that is also grace. Like, for example, gifting, right? So certain things you're able to do because of the grace of God. So with the calling also comes the grace of God, right? Um, what actually, you know, uh, holds this all together, the anointing, the gray, the calling, is the character. Right? Very important, very foundational character. Um, when you, what we're saying by intuition is again, you know, something that can be developed, where you develop a sensitivity to, um, sorry, sensitivity to uh, music, sensitivity in terms of experience to, you know, leading people, sensitivity to what the Holy Spirit is doing, and. You know, um, so uh, uh, we, we would say uh, an anointed intuition, right? Natural gifting always helps, which means certain things that you're born with, right? musical ability, timing, rhythm, you know, natural gifting. And uh, again, the grace of God, God's grace, right? So um, what are the character traits of an effective worship leader? Okay. So... If you, as a person, you are over, you know, you're giving oversight to a particular church, you planted a church. Now you want to, you know, start a worship ministry, and initially you might be the, you might be leading everything, but you know, let's say you you, you realize that okay, you know, here is someone, and I feel that I need to give this person the opportunity, and you know, feel that that person can actually develop into a, you know, good worship leader. What are some things that we are looking at, right? So. Um, so here are some things uh, uh, that some qualities that we can look for. Um, now these are qualities that we would look for in any leader, like in any capacity, any leader of a spiritual ministry. Um, this is what we would look look for, right? So what are some things that we can ask ask ourselves, right? First question would be, you know, are they humble, right? Because humility. Um, is very necessary, especially in the area of worship, right? Because you are without with pride, you cannot worship. Right? We need to be humble in order to worship because pride and worship don't go together. Right? Worship itself, by definition, right? It's an intense adoration. It's a, uh, it's humbling of ourselves. It's giving up of ourselves, surrendering ourselves. You know, you can't do that with pride, right? So, is the person humble? Right. Secondly, do they have a personal relationship with God that is thriving? Right. Do they have a secret place or secret life with God? Right. Maybe others can't see it, but you know they're not talking about it. But then, do they have that? You know that quiet time, that being rooted in the Word. Do they take all these things? Uh, do they value these things? Right. So you're saying, you know, I'm a worship pass, I mean worship leader, and but they're not really valuing the word of God. You know, they're saying, okay, I'm a worship leader, uh, and I oh, I just love to worship, but they are not valuing the work of the Spirit of God. Then you know that okay, either they are not understood it, understood the connection, or you know, they're not mature enough, right? There is a disconnect. Or maybe they are just looking at the external, maybe they're just interested in singing you know they like that external part of it being there singing a song doing that playing the music they like that environment they enjoy doing that um, and, they, and but then if they don't have that personal time in the word maybe they are not even esteeming the word of god personally in their lives 
um, then we see that there is a disconnect, right? So that is something that we need to look at and and try and see. See, not everybody is going to be, you know, like super spiritual, right? Well, they might have their limitations. Maybe they didn't have their, you know, they're just growing. So we need to give them time. But then, do they esteem these things? Esteem meaning, you know, do they respect these things? Do they value these things? Right? Uh, we need to ensure that it happens. All right. Third one: Are they able to take direction or correction? Right. Suppose you give them feedback. Hey, this thing was not right. Uh, now, you may, you, are, you, you know, we may not have a better. We may not have a great understanding of music. You know, for example, it happens, right? Maybe the there's a pastor and then there's a worship leader, and the pastor does not understand all the technicalities of music or the skill of music, etc. But the the person understands that something was not right, right? In that particular, um, you know, in that particular service, something was. You know, I, I'm not able to pinpoint, but something was not right. Or maybe this person says, "Okay, I notice these things." And uh, this proved to be a distraction. I know you were doing this, but it proved to be a distraction for the congregation. So, when such a feedback comes, you know, when such a, a review is made, a review and a comment is made, how is that person taking it? Right. So, are they open? Are they teachable? Are they able to take direction, correction? Right. Like able to take feedback because even if there is a one percent truth in what is coming as feedback, one should be able to you know, say, okay, this seems to be something, this this seems to be an area where I can change, where I can correct. Like for example, I remember uh, uh, once we had, uh, you know, we had uh, people, uh, like there were, there were a couple of things that were happening, right, in our worship uh, ministry, worship time and Sunday service. We had people who were who would start preaching. Okay, so these worship leaders would start preaching or talking a lot, telling people how they should worship instead of actually leading people into worship. Right, just talking over and over again. So, so that had to be that change had to be made. Right, so feedback had to be given. Then we had people who would. Uh, you know, who, a song has a certain melody. Then we had we had people who would not sing that melody, who would sing their own tune to that particular song. Okay, now over and above that melody, you know what we call as ad lib or spontaneous kind of a singing. Oh, same words, different melody, over and over that actual melody of the song. So it was confusing the congregation. You know, hey, what do we sing? Do we, I know the song, but do I sing with them, or do I, you know, what, sing the original song, or what is it? So people were getting distracted, not able to enter into worship, and so on. Right. So one had to give feedback, saying, "Stop talking too much. Uh, don't talk. Just exhort. Start leading. Just go from song to song." Maybe from from time to time, just exhort the people, but don't give a message. Don't you know the worship time is not for preaching. Preaching time is separate, right? So we had to kind of give feedback, and well, uh, people took it well, right? So that's something that we need we need in a in a in a worship team in in people who are leading worship, who uh, who we call as worship leaders. You know, they should be able to take direction, able to take correction right uh, the fourth one is again in this in the in the in the lines of feedback so when it comes to positive feedback in the form of compliment, compliments right uh, and people giving praise right so if people say you know that was wonderful i was able to worship you know that was what you said what you the, the song that you sang it was good um it's you know, so how do they respond to that? Like, how do they respond to that? Um, so, and are they treating it as something that is very precious for them? You know, they are they waiting for that? Uh, so we're talking about affirmations, compliments, praises of people. Is it very important for them? So, which means they're just waiting to hear something like that after their time of ministry. You know. 
So that's not a healthy thing, right? So if a person is just going around saying, hey, how was it? How was it? How was it? You know, not just as a corrective feedback, constructive criticism, but they want to hear the praises of people. Okay? Then that is not a healthy thing. Okay. So are they doing what they do to serve or to gain some kind of respect? Right? So it has to something to do with identity, right? If their identity is, my identity is in who I am as a musician, or who I am as a minister of God. If my identity is that, right? My value, self worth, respectability, everything. If I'm going to get from that, right? Then it is a problem. Why is it a problem? Yeah, why is it a problem? Uh, maybe uh, we tried to you know, gain it more or pursue it more and we may lose our identity who we are in Christ and make it as an idol. Hmm. Sometimes we can be uh, insecure also when we see other people who are doing Oh. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So self worth, everything. If our whole, if we're going, so I'm sorry, we're going to give that as uh, you know importance, so much importance that without that we cannot function. Right? We are just waiting. Uh, and if our if we are if our grounding, if our foundation is that, then if that is not there. Then it's going to make your life miserable. Right? You're going to be depressed. You're going to be hunting for that, waiting for that, and uh, it's 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 an open door for the enemy to actually, you know, bring down your life. Right? It can so many things can creep in. Pride can creep in. Um, you know, bitterness can creep in. Anger can keep creep in, and so our whole attitude towards people. Uh, you know, we will we will do start doing things for the sake of getting this. You know, I will say some things, do some things, so that well, at the end of the day, I want to be appreciated. You wanted to say something. Uh, say same thing. Okay. Mm. So, are... so that it's more than uh, it's about them. That's what they try to. Yeah, that's that's another thing. You know, it becomes all about them rather than about God. You know, so the focus, yeah, worshiping God. So the focus becomes about them, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll take a break and then we'll come back. Yeah.